The big game is almost here, and there's no better way to cash in during America's biggest sporting event than Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and Florida. All you have to do is select two or more players, pick more or less on their stat projections for the game, and place your entry. It's that easy. You could turn $10 into $1,000 with just four correct picks. Pick anything from passing yards to defensive stats like tackles. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks is matching your first deposit of up to $100 when you download the Prize Picks app and use code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Super Bowl 58 is just two days away, and business has certainly picked up here in Las Vegas. We're in the heart of Radio Row in the Mandalay Bay Convention Center, and it is absolutely heaving. People are teaming into Las Vegas, all wanting to get just a taste, a glimpse of what Super Bowl week really feels like. The celebrities are in town as well. I've seen former Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb around. Pat McAfee's in the building. He'll be hosting a huge uh, WrestleMania press conference a little bit later this afternoon. Dion Sanders is doing the rounds as well, certainly on, on local radio. Anyone who's anyone is in Las Vegas right now. So enough of me talking. Let's look ahead to the greatest show on earth, the Chiefs and 49ers this Sunday at Super Bowl 58. Graves on Gridiron with Richard Graves. Welcome along to the show once again. A brand new podcast every day this week from Las Vegas, Nevada. We're giving the biggest show on earth, the biggest build-up on earth possible. Coming up on today's show, we'll be hearing from veteran tight end of the Kansas City Chiefs, Blake Bell. We'll also be catching up with Las Vegas sports broadcaster Joe Arrigo just to get a, a sense and a flavor of what this week has really been like for Las Vegas natives. But just to give you a, a feel, a taste of what it's like, at the start of the week, there, there was a little bit of a hum um, around this city. But recently, honest, every which way you turn, there are fans, there are celebrities. There is an excitement about this city right now as we close in and get ever closer to the big game itself. This Sunday afternoon, uh, Sunday evening in the UK, of course, between the Raiders and the Chiefs, both teams chasing their own version of history. Two teams that have been fantastic throughout the season. Two teams who have extraordinarily good defences as well. So let's first of all get a flavour from a Las Vegas native. Uh, Joe Arrigo, Las Vegas sports broadcaster, lives here, works here. Um, obviously, seen a lot, of, a lot of change as well in recent years with the Raiders moving town. A fantastic, brand new, state-of-the-art 65,000 all-seater stadium to boot. There's an optimism about the Raiders organisation as well. But there's disappointment that when they're hosting the Super Bowl, they're not here yet. And yet is a mouth-watering matchup in store. So let's get a sense of what it's like if you live in Vegas to have the Super Bowl in town. Here's Joe Arrigo. We're probably the two best teams, if we're going to be honest. The 49ers got lucky their last two games. Green Bay should have beat them. And really, Detroit lost the game. Detroit snatched a, a defeat out of the jaws of victory. So, and Kansas City, look, they out-bullied the bullies with the Ravens. And that's why, to me, they should be the, the favorite. What? What is it about the Kansas City Chiefs? Because they had their critics, rightfully so, during the course of the regular season. But I tell you what, come the business end of the season, playoff time, and it doesn't matter what obstacles you seem to put in their way, they find a way to overcome. We know they changed themselves. They changed their whole identity. They went from this high, this, this offense, we're going to outscore you, to now their defense is actually leading the way. And Mahomes is doing a better job of you know, taking the checkdowns and taking what's giving him, what he's given, which he wasn't doing earlier in his career. So you see a transition, I think, with Mahomes, and then, and then even with Andy Reid. The question is, is this Andy Reid's last game if they win? I, I tend to think there's a very good possibility that he may retire if they win the Super Bowl. Well, three and five it would be if they win uh, this weekend. And I mean, I know the Cowboys won three and four in the 90s, and you've had the Patriots go on a similar path as well. But th this is elite level status, isn't it? 100%. Th this is, I think if, if Mahomes wins here, you're looking at someone that's I know Brady's going to have more Super Bowls, but he's going to be the new Tom Brady of the NFL. Mm -hmm. And because 
at this point, what, what hasn't he done? MVP, Super Bowl MVPs, maybe three Super Bowls. And he's done it in, a, what, a five-year span? It's crazy. If you're the 49ers, then what is your game plan come Sunday? How do you contain Patrick Mahomes? For me, I, I, I get up, I bump, I stop the run. And to me, you stop Isaiah Pacheco. It's not stopping Mahomes, you stop Pacheco because that, allevi- that eliminates play action passes. You make sure you tackle, and then you make them beat you on the outside. There's, Mar- Marquez Valdez-Scantling is probably the one guy that has some speed to stretch you out. There's, there's not a lot of other, too much speed guys on that Chiefs offense, so I want to see them get up, play some bump and run, and, and for, actually force, it sounds crazy, force Mahomes to beat you. Valdez Scantley might be the guy with, with speed on the outside. He's got inconsistent hands, though. 100%. I'm a Green Bay fan. When he left, I wasn't disappointed. But, but <laughs> well, that but, says a lot, doesn't yeah, it? <laughs> but but, play, but game ceiling playoff MVS is different. He's he actually when Green Bay when they were winning some games, uh, Rodgers hit him on some on some balls late in games, and he made some plays. You've seen it in the AFC Championship game on on the last play of the game. I think it was a third down yeah. play. So you know he he seems to step up big in those moments. You got to give him credit for that. What do the Niners have to do if they're going to win? I'm going to give you a couple of stats here, and it relates to Kyle Shanahan, their head coach. In his offenses, in first in the first three quarters of the two Super Bowls that he's been involved in, obviously as head coach four years ago, Super Bowl 51, he was the offensive coordinator at the Atlanta Falcons. His offense has averaged 8.1 yards per play, 2.93 points per drive, with the quarterback having a 127.4 pass rating. However, get to the fourth quarter of those two games, it goes down to 4.3 yards per play, no points per drive, 38.7 pass rating. Is that all on Kyle Shanahan or is it on his players? How crash can I be? Go for it. His butthole puckers in big situations. As simple as that. You, you blow, you go back him as an OC and as a head coach. He can For him to go into games with leads, big leads going in the fourth quarter, if you look at the numbers as you stated, they don't they don't do well they, they tend to choke it's so, a problem a big time problem and i and i really think if they would have lost to green bay i think the seat would have been hot for him regardless if there's an extension signed or not because you can have the best team in the nsc arguably the nfl and then turn around and blow leads or get blown out at home because again they should have lost their last two games i think it's the first half is going to be interesting if Kansas City can get out to a two-touchdown lead, I don't see the 49ers coming back to that. So the, the big key is, and, it's, and for the people that like to wager out there, take the over in the first half. I don't gamble, but that's just something that I would do, take the over in the first half, because I think it's going to be a high-scoring first half. I think second half is going to slow down a little bit. Well, I was going to say, p- putting your neck on the line, money where your mouth is, as it stands right now, the San Francisco 49ers are two and a half point favorites just to win outright. You can get 13 to 10 on to win. Do you agree with that? Or do you think the Kansas City Chiefs find a way yet again this postseason to get the job done? As of this Wednesday, I would take it. I would take that money because the more money is going to come in later in the week for the 49ers, and that number is going to go up. I like the Chiefs, though. To do back to back? To back to back. Three and five? Yep. Dynasty. I do. I do. I, I think that is. I think this. This. This will probably be it, though. I think that three and five will be it. And I think you're going to see some other teams in the AFC. I mean, look, Houston is a very good young team. Um, you look at Buffalo; they got to get over that hump. And then you know the Ravens. The Ravens aren't going to go anywhere. So you have those. That, and and talk about a team whose offense. You know, how do you run? Not run the ball when you have the number one rushing team in the NFL. That makes no sense to me. So I do think this is it for the Chiefs. They win. And then, and I feel bad because Diamond Lenore is a good friend of mine. So, this, so I would love for, for for D to get get the ring, but at the same time, personally, I, I can't. I don't want that to happen at all. Greg's on Gridiron. Well, Joe didn't mince his words, did he? Certainly uh, made it clear how he thinks this game is going to pan out and what the potential issues are. Certainly for the 49ers going into this weekend's game, but. They are the best team in the NFC. They are the NFC champions. And if they're taken lightly, then it'll, you do so at your peril. Certainly the Kansas City Chiefs will have no intentions of taking them lightly. They've been battling against the tide, it feels, for much of this season. They've had many critics, many naysayers, and yet they've overcome the odds. They've gone on the road in the playoffs when people doubted that they could do that and win. And yet they are here. They're in the big dance once again. Their fourth Super Bowl in five years and a chance for many on this team to get their third Super Bowl winner's ring in that time. And also, 
that chance to create history and go back to back. For head coach Andy Reid, it would be his third Super Bowl success as a head coach if they can prevail in this match upon Sunday. Only five other head coaches in the history of the NFL have reached that feat. And for some veterans, such as tight end Blake Bell, it never gets lost on them how fortunate they are to be here. It started out as a dream when he entered the NFL. Now it's reality. It's great catching up with him at the Chiefs media uh, availability uh, yesterday. And here's how he's going to approach this game. Certainly, like I say, he's not going to take anything for granted. Blake, I, I know you've been here before. You've experienced this before. Um, but it always changes. It's always different, isn't it? Always different. Um, it's every, every single year you're here, you know, you got to enjoy it. Um, you never know when you're going to be back. But obviously this is my third one. And uh, blessed, grateful to be here and excited uh, for Sunday. Hey, are you able to get used to it, or is there something that surprises you every time? No, every time it surprises you. Um, to get here, and finally when you land here and you see all the festivities and all the fans and opening night, it's special, and you, you definitely have to uh, soak it all up. And despite the experience, obviously, you, you can't escape, escape the noise from outside of, of the organization. A lot of people talking about the chance to create a little bit of history. That same conversation was being had a couple of years ago. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers came out on top on that occasion. Is this team in a better position to perhaps create a little bit of history this time around? Yeah, I think so. I think we've got a, a great team with all the ups and downs we've overcame this season. Um, we had a little extra week last week to prepare for the 49ers, and we got, obviously, this whole week as well. And um, we're excited for the challenge and, and looking forward to Sunday. Let's talk about this San Francisco 49ers defense then because rightfully they've earned the reputation as one of the more feared units in the NFL. When you look at them on tape and see them in person, what do you see? Yeah, they're very good. Defensive line is, is outstanding, linebackers and, and, their, and their safeties in, in the secondary. So uh, we definitely got a challenge, but we'll be, we'll be ready for that challenge and, and get ready for them on Sunday. You look at the linebacking core particularly, Fred Warner, Dre, Dre Greenlaw, they seem to have a, the talent of being able to carry receivers downfield as well. Does that make it a more difficult problem to solve? Yeah, absolutely. They fly around, they're physical, uh, so it makes it tough. But, um, you know, that's why we do film study and get out there and work on everything and, and kind of see what they do. But, uh, like I said, we'll prepare and be ready to roll. As an offense, you, you've taken your fair share of criticism this season, but at the business end, you, you seem to have sorted a few things out, ironed out some creases. What's been the difference? You know, I think just staying the course, you know, preparing each and every week. You know, we won the Super Bowl last year, so we're going to get everyone's best shot, and, uh, and we did. So through all the ups and downs and kind of the roller coaster we went through this year, I think we've, uh, you know, kind of hit our stride here and, and uh, you know, just going to work each and every week and trying to get better. What's it like playing alongside number 15? Because everybody knows he's special, and yet he still seems to be able to raise his game when it matters most. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Uh, each and every week he prepares. Uh, He's a gamer, man. He's going to come out there ready to roll. Um, he knows how to get the guys fired up and, uh, and bring everyone with him. Quite often it appears more what isn't said than what is actually said. When he's making plays up on the fly, extending them, what's that chemistry like? How do you know where he needs you to be, what you need to do? If you're on the field and you're an eligible receiver, you better be ready because you never know if you're going to get the ball. So that's what makes 15 special. Um, you know, if you just, you're down the field and you're not even supposed to get the ball, you might get it because he might scramble and, and give it to you. So... Um, you got to be ready at all times. Have you been a popular guy this week? Have you fielded a few calls asking for tickets? Uh, yes, a little bit. Uh, more family, though, so I'm always excited to get the family here and, and uh, so they can enjoy it as well. We've spoken about what it means from a team perspective, the opportunity to create a little bit of history. Even though you've already won one of these, what do you mean to you? Oh, I mean everything. Every single time you're here, um, ever since you started playing football as a kid, this is why you play it. And you dream of situations like this. So, uh, like I said, I'm blessed to be here and can't wait. Thank you for your time. Go well this Sunday. I appreciate it. Thank you. Griggs on Gridiron. Blake Bell certainly looking forward to this Sunday's matchup. And for every player and coach involved in the game, it's a date with destiny. A chance to create their own little piece of history, write their own names into the history books and have it etched there for all to see forevermore. It's the Vince Lombardi Trophy. It's the pinnacle of the NFL season, the highlight of the sporting calendar, and we can't say it enough. And if you ever doubted it, you really just need to be in Las Vegas and see the scene that 
The strip either side, the walkways, absolutely rammed with fans. I was told earlier today that they're expecting within a 10 mile radius of Las Vegas over the course of this weekend, half a million people to be in town. Allegiant Stadium only ho holds 65,000. You don't need to be the smartest mathematician in the world to work out that 500,000 into 65 does not go. There will be parties, there'll be celebration. There no doubt will be tears as well for those fans that come up on the losing end of uh, the equation on Sunday afternoon. But right now, everybody's united in their excitement, all looking ahead to the big game itself this Sunday. We still have a couple more podcasts before then to give you the very latest build-up, breakdown of the matchups and views and opinions ahead of the 49ers and Chiefs. It's sure to be another titanic battle. We were treated to a royal occasion four years ago when they met in Miami. It lived up to the hype that day. Will it live up to the hype this Sunday in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada? We'll find out, but I will see you before then um, on the YouTube channel at Richard Graves TV. Plenty more insight, views, opinions, interviews that we've had throughout the course of the week building up to the big game. Obviously on the Facebook page, Graves on Gridiron, there's more there for you to consume if that is not enough. And get in touch with me via Instagram at uh, RDG Media UK or on X at Richard Graves One. Tell me your thoughts, who you think will win the game, who you think will be the key players in deciding the outcome of Super Bowl 58. Love to hear from you all, but until the next time, so long everybody. Subscribe to Graves on Gridiron wherever you listen to podcasts and keep up to date with the latest on Twitter. Search for Richard Graves One. That's Richard Graves, the number one. Podcast Network.